Hi, my name is Neil Trivett. I'm a writer and a director. Hi, I'm Jordan Hare. I'm an actor. I'm Benson Anthony. I am an actor. And we are here in Berlin representing our film Emo the Musical. This song doesn't have a name because I'm not into labels. I don't even care if you like it. You think you're so awesome. Nobody's as cool as you. You're gonna impregnate everyone, men and women too. But don't call me when all the child support is due. Cause I don't wanna be in your stupid band. Hello, Hi. nice to have you here. Neil, Jordan and Benson, the director and the main actors of the great movie Emu the Musical. So, Neil, what drew you to the subject, or like not to the subject, but more to the genre of a musical? I do like musicals, but what I really love is high school films. So, uh, I like films like Easy A and I like Mean Girls uh, and the chance to kind of add a a musical element to it just felt really fun. Like the idea was to trap an emo inside a musical because emos wouldn't like to be inside musicals. So the idea kind of grew from that and it exploded into something a lot, a lot more about holy war and tolerance and getting on with each other. Um, but that's how the idea started. Yeah, I had the idea that music is like basic to identification for especially adolescents, isn't it? Like Yeah, like music is really important to young people. Also like these two different groups express themselves through their music. So the Christians perform like folk songs, so for them, yeah, their, their religious songs about Jesus are really important, but for the emo songs, being able to express their anger and their sadness is, is, was really important as well. So it did, it did make kind of perfect sense to throw that into a musical, yeah. So, um, Bradley and Isaac, the band leaders, who are pretty much like rivals, are pretty despotic, aren't they? So yes. what was on your mind when you wrote the script? I think we all know people like that, um, people who are the leaders of groups. Um, the people who are the leaders of groups are generally the least interesting person in the group. I think I would, I would say that that's a safe thing to say. But um, the people who refuse to change, they've got this belief. Uh, Bradley is uh, determined emos are a certain way and he will refuse to, to look outside of that. Um, and the same with Isaac as well. And what's really interesting is that the things that they, they think can't change are completely opposite. So uh, Bradley has all these opinions about sexuality and sex and, and how you, you should express your, your emotions. Um, whereas Isaac's personality is, is really wanting to share happiness and really, of course, wanting to share Jesus with people. Um, and he has a very different view of sexuality as well, which is very stringent mm. and doesn't necessarily fit any of the people who are in his group, but you know, that, that is what he believes and what he thinks others should do. So it's the school, the high school, is a place of bigotry, isn't it? Like, I mean, they're always hiding something. One girl is pregnant, you fall in love um, um, with Trinity, mm -hmm. and Trinity does as well. I had the idea that you, Trinity, fell on first sight in love with him. And it was like more easy for you as a character, as the figure, Trinity, to express this emotion. Would you, would you agree? Yeah, I would definitely agree. Um, and also, when she first sees him, he's standing by a Christian locker, and so she immediately thinks he's, he's like her. And so she thinks, this will be easy, I'll, I'll talk to him. Um, but even after she finds out he's not like her, I think she is still the more open person, and she'll, she'll try, she'll try and make it work. So yeah, I definitely agree with that. But she's always trying to convince him to convert. I mean, she wants to baptize him, for example. Mm -hmm. She's giving him the, the Bible, what she got from her parents. So yeah. what's, what's this kind of... Uh, why did you... Did you understand it? Like, why, why, she, why, why did she try to convince him like, to be, become a Christian? And not so much an, like an emo. Yeah. So this, like, 
This is quite re reviving, isn't it? Yeah, it's part of her character journey as well, because at the start she thinks the only way that she can be with this guy is if she, she converts him, she makes him more like her, so it will be acceptable to everyone else. But um, throughout the course of the film, she learns that um, that he can be, he can absolutely be himself. She doesn't have to change him at all, and and people should just stop worrying as much. And she she realizes this is not the way to go. I did wonder how long did you rehearse with your actors? I mean, it has been a pretty intense film, I think, a musical especially. Mm. We, like, I, I know the answers should be that we spent months and months in rehearsal, but unfortunately we didn't have a long time with these, these guys. The, these guys are on TV shows, um, it's a huge cast, so it's a cast of 10 lead characters, so we didn't get a lot of time with them. Yeah, it was tricky. I, I was only cast two weeks before we started shooting. Whoa. So, um, and like you said, we have what, eight or nine other kind of main cast members who are located kind of all around the world, all, all Australian, um, but they're kind of, they live everywhere, so getting us all in the one room for rehearsals two weeks out from the start of, of shooting was really tricky. So we, we didn't spend kind of half as much time as we wanted to rehearsing, but when we did, it was intense and we kind of got as much out as we can. And what Benson had to learn in those those weeks, was, oh, yeah, yeah, there was yeah. a lot to cover. Yeah, yeah, so uh, as well as kind of, you know, learning every song um, in that I had to learn to play guitar uh, for the film and, mm -hmm. you know, the character, which is so different Within to myself. Within like two weeks you need to Yeah, play. yeah, yeah. Whoa. It was a busy two weeks. It was a really yeah. busy two yeah. weeks. My, I had blisters all over my fingers and was, you know, trying to get into the headspace of an emo and learning how to put on eyeliner, so it was intense, but fun. Yeah. So you have been a quite young team, especially the cast, and you are a quite young director too. Yes. So were there like any, what was special for you shooting with a, such a young director and vice versa? What has been like challenging for you to work with like very young actors? Do you guys want to go first? I think it was interesting because we were all in the process of learning the whole time, you know? We were all discovering things on set, uh, put eight, 18 to 25 year old kids in a room for two months and tell them to make a movie it's, it's going to be really interesting and you know we all got along very well and everyone's so lovely in the cast but i mean i don't know how you did it because he was the one who had to orchestrate everything happening but uh, yeah we were all just discovering kind of what what we were doing and and workshopping so it was fun I was secretly terrified um, <laughs> because everyone was very nervous. Like a lot of people had never made a movie before. Um, okay. Like some of, some of the younger people, uh, a lot of them had been on screen before, but this was their first feature credit. So, and I was terrified as well. So we were just constantly making everybody forget that we weren't making a movie, um, trying to act like it was all fun when secretly on the inside I was dying. Um, so yeah, it was a lot of it was a lot of work just keeping the face up, I think. But also, there's something magical about working with young people um, because. The, everyone gets older. Um, these guys are at a certain age that they will never be again. We had the same thing with the short where people move on and they get older and it's something that's really, it, it's a film about growing up so it's wonderful to, to kind of do it. It was really important that we did it with kids, that, uh, young people who are growing up and won't ever be this age again. For, for me that's always really special. So you have been with Emo, uh, like a short movie already at Berlinale Film Festival. Yes. So what did you make like to extend and to make like a long feature movie? Uh, a lot of the things about the short and feature are really similar. Um, so there's a plot structure that, that is pretty similar, but we've inserted there's a, a rock concert. There's some kind of tropes that you'll see in high school movies that we have kind of stolen and done our own slightly twisted thing with. But the biggest thing we did was the, the universe in the short film is kind of odd or you've got a feeling that it's odd, but you don't get a chance to explore it. So in the feature film, we got to explore it. Uh, characters who didn't have a line in the short film were suddenly fully-fledged characters with songs. So whereas it's two characters who get a journey in the short film, there are about somewhere between eight and ten, I've, I've no idea, uh, about eight or ten characters who all have this amazing, fun journey. Um, so for us, that was the main thing we wanted to focus on when we were fleshing it out and making it bigger. So... Um <laughs> we need to cut this. We need to edit this. <laughs> oh, it changes to, now. Yeah, All trying right. to read your handwriting. Like, oh. We can say whatever we like now. This is fun. Yeah. <laughs> what was the name again from the teacher? Uh, Mrs. Doyle, which Mrs. is played Doyle. by an actress called Bridie Carter. Okay. So there we go again. So that we don't see actually like um, adults. Most of them, like a few teachers. Mrs. Dodd is one of them. 
happiness. So they are quite strange as well. I mean, everybody needs to be happy and this is like the theme of the school. This school is a happy school. So how did you come up with that? Uh, we definitely didn't want many adults in the movie because it is kind of a strange metaphor for Holy War, this film. Uh, and if you kind of add adult characters into that, you kind of go, well, where do they fit? Are they God? Are they the leaders? I mean, it was a little bit too complicated. So to keep, to keep the uh, younger people with agency, it was important to remove the, the adults. Um, but I kind of consider the teacher's storyline to belong with the younger characters rather than with the few adult characters. She has her own journey. There's this teacher who is working incredibly hard and holding a lot together in a school that is falling apart. Um, I think schools all around the world, public schools, are a struggle to, to keep their funding. So this, this teacher is experiencing that. So she makes a really bad deal with a drug company which is obsessed <laughs> with being happy. And this woman doesn't, has not experienced a lot of happiness in her life. So she's suddenly having to keep happy all the time and pretend that she's happy constantly just so she can keep this school running. And there's a point where she just can't keep being happy and she has to kind of confront her personal sadness. And I think that really fits in nicely with the emo storyline because emos are all about not having to be happy all the time. And I think that's the best thing about emos is they, they say, relax, don't be happy, be sad a bit, that's fine. Um, so the teacher's journey is, is saying sometimes drugs aren't the answer, sometimes they are. But, I mean like medication <laughs> drugs, not, we're not talking heroin. No. Um, sometimes drugs are, are an appropriate answer, but sometimes it's okay to feel bad and sometimes your life might not be very good and you should, if not embrace it, accept that and, and make that part of who you are and what your life is. And also that theme is so relevant, like I, I don't want to speak because you're the writer and you know, but, when, but when I was reading it, you know, that having to be happy all the time is really, re it resonates with a younger, uh, people at the moment, especially just with the whole social media thing. I mean, like every single post on social media is, I'm happy, I'm with friends, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And you never ever, or in the social media sphere, there's no mention of sadness. So when people feel sad, they feel alone and, yeah, you know, indifferent to everyone else and secluded. So it's a real issue, you know. I have, I have a young sister and she's going through that at the moment as well. It's like no one ever talks about bad things and to or sad things. And talking about a sad thing isn't bad, you know. Acknowledging it is really important. So that was uh, one of the main... Uh, I don't know, reasons or that attracted me to this film is it's like, oh, great, maybe we can just make it a little easier for people to talk about, you know, not being okay, and that's okay, you know? Now you've got to start it. Like, YouTube stars now, they're so aspirational, and they're all, like, these beautiful, attractive people from California telling you you can achieve your dreams, do whatever you like. It's like, of course you can if you live in California and look like that. Yeah, you know? and, and you can't, and it's time that we say, well, sometimes a lot of us, you know, statistically, some of us have to fail. Um, and it's not a beautiful concept, but it's better that we, we deal with it earlier rather than later and we work out how to either fix it or, or live with it. And it's, yeah. And we, yeah. so by living with it, we just make it a bit funny. And that's what this yeah. movie is. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a funny film because, yeah, uh, to have a, 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 what's a, a climactic kind of triumphant moment where someone claims their own depression is weird. Yeah. But, you know, we have fun with it in the movie. Mm. Yeah. So are you working already on a next project, Neil? I am in early stages of development. This was a very heavy, busy project. And I had to do a lot of jobs, so I'm starting to develop some new stuff. I'm working on a, a few different things, but the one I'm most excited by is a kids' horror film, um, which is, again, <laughs> set inside a high school, but it's about a lie that goes dramatically wrong. Um, but that's in early stages of development. I, I'll, I'll see how that goes. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.